London is a city on the move. But just think how much busier it would be up here if there weren't 3 million people a day travelling down here. This is the Tube. By the way, the Tube is the nickname for the London Underground. Subway is American English. Trains have played a very important role in the history and culture of England. In this video, we will take a short trip through the history of trains. The first stop is steam trains, followed by the Tube, Docklands Light Railway, and finally Eurostar. Railways have played an important role in British industrial history. Wagons pushed on rails were being used in English mines as early as the 14th century. In the 18th century, iron railroads started appearing. Wagons were pulled by horses and used for carrying freight to the canal system. In 1803, Richard Trevithick invented the first steam engine. But over 20 years later, steam engines were still not being used for passenger trains on the first passenger line between Stockton and Darlington. This was changed in 1829 by the rocket. George Stevenson and his son Robert entered a competition organised by the Liverpool to Manchester line. It won the competition by travelling a total of 70 miles at an average speed of 13 miles per hour. The design revolutionised steam engines. By using many tubes rather than one large tank to heat water, it was able to generate a lot more steam power. The age of the steam train had arrived. Here at the National Railway Museum in York, a replica of the rocket is on display. Next to it is another steam engine that made history. This is the Mallard. It holds the record for the fastest speed by a steam engine, 126 miles per hour, set in 1938. Overall, steam engines were a vital component of the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. Over 110,000 were built in Britain between 1804 and 1971. The London Underground is the oldest underground railway system in the world. The first line was opened in 1863. It was built using a method called cut and cover. After the route was decided, a trench, called a cutting, was dug. The railroad was laid at the bottom of the trench. Finally a roof was put over the railroad. But the early underground lines had a serious problem. This is a locomotive that ran on the very first underground line. It is a steam train. The tunnels and stations were always full of smoke. But despite such problems, the network was popular and expanded rapidly. By the 1880s, new technology allowed a truly underground system. Electric trains solved the problem of polluted air. Lifts and escalators were developed that enabled large numbers of people to get underground. Workmen dug the tunnels from inside metal rings, which increased safety. This is where the nickname tube comes from. The tunnels are all in the shape of a tube. Outside central London, the tracks were built overground. New suburbs and commuter towns developed around the tube stations. Posters like these promoted the convenience of the tube. From country to the heart of town, 30 minutes. Before the invention of trains and the popularity of buses in the 19th century, the River Thames was the great highway through London. In the east end of London were the docks, from which goods were shipped to the rest of Britain and overseas. The docks closed down as London became a global financial centre. But now Docklands is enjoying a renaissance as an upmarket residential and business district. Many fashionable apartments and businesses 
have been built in converted dock warehouses. The Docklands Light Railway DLR, has been built to serve this new community. One interesting feature of this train is that you can actually sit next to the driver. Or perhaps we should say operator. The train's computer does the driving. The operator does safety checks. DLR runs mostly above ground on raised rails, but here it is disappearing into the tunnel under the Thames. And speaking of tunnels, Let's finish this video with a brief discussion of the greatest ever railway engineering project in England, the Channel Tunnel. And let's do so by comparing it with the Seikun Tunnel. The Channel Tunnel was opened in 1994, six years after the Seikun Tunnel. Both can claim to be the world's longest underwater tunnel. But look carefully. The Channel Tunnel has the longest section under the ocean but the Seikan Tunnel is the longest tunnel with a section under the ocean. I will let you choose which is the world's longest underwater tunnel. Running through the Channel Tunnel is Eurostar. This express train connects London and Paris in three hours. We have reached the end of the line, as it were, for this short Introducing England video series. I hope you have enjoyed this brief look at aspects of my home country. Perhaps there will be more videos introducing England in the future, but for now, goodbye.